Where are you? Hmm. I think I'm laying on a bed. Mm-hmm. I think I'm a little boy. Mm -hmm. I have a bunch of siblings all on the bed. Mm -hmm. How old do you feel there? Mm, Maybe six. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Mm, Felt like I was mm, like falling out of a tunnel. Mm When you fell out of the tunnel, where did you fall into? This bed. Mm-hmm. So look around you. Describe everything you see. You can do it in your normal tone of voice so I can hear you. <clears throat> it seems like an older... An older home, mm-hmm. maybe. Wood. Mm-hmm. There's... Um, A quilt on the bed. Mm -hmm. Bunch of us laying in the bed. How many is a bunch? Look around you. Who's with you? Maybe three. Three? Are they boys or girls? Maybe one girl and two boys. Mm -hmm. So describe them for me. What do they look like? They're my, my brothers and sisters. Uh-huh. How old do, are they? Are they younger or older? I think I'm the youngest. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Well, this is maybe 15. Mm-hmm. What are you doing on this bed together? It's cold outside. So we're all snuggled up trying to stay warm. Wonderful. Can you see your brothers and sisters eyes? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So let's find out a little bit about where you, this place is. Let's find out where you are. So I'd like for you now to leave this scene and let's go to another scene in the same lifetime where you're all together doing something else. Mm, We're out in a barn. Mm -hmm. We're working in the farm. (coughs) My... mm, My sense is that there's horses Mm -hmm. and sheep. Chickens. Mm Mm-hmm. And tell me what the terrain looks like where you are. Mm. What do you see around you? There's some mountains off in the distance. Mm -hmm. Some rolling hills. Um, Kind of... Kind of dead grass. Mm -hmm. Mm. Why do you imagine the grass is dead? It's a sad time of year. Mm-hmm. Is it harvest time? Mm, could be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's find out what it is that you do in the farm. How old are you there? I think I'm six. Six. So what are your chores? I have to feed the chickens. Mm-hmm. And I'm cleaning up around the barn a little bit. The horses are big, so I try to stay away from them. Do you see anybody else there with you? I know my older brother, he's taking care of the horses. Um, I don't see my sister. Mm-hmm. Can you see your brother's eyes now? No. Mm -hmm. I want you to connect with his soul. See if his soul is familiar to you. Mm 
I think it is, but I can't figure out who. Mm-hmm. What's the first name that pops into your mind? Jeremy. Mm-hmm. So connect now with the soul and see if, if it's Jeremy. All the souls have their own vibration mm. and signature. And you'll recognize them when you see them. He says his name is Jeremy, but I don't recognize him in, okay. in my life. Very good. Very good. So let's move on now. And let's find another scene in that same lifetime when something important is happening. Mm. I think there might be a fire. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. I think there's a fire in the barn. Where are you? I'm going out to help. I don't see... I don't really see anybody else yet. It's just me. Mm -hmm. I'm really cold. What happens next? I see the horses, um, like, freaking out. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm going to go try to help them. Mm -hmm. So tell me what happens. So I go to the gate to try to unlock it, and there's, they're freaking out, and the fire is, like, in the back and it's loud sounds mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is anybody there with you I think they're coming mm -hmm. I think I hear like my mom yelling at me what does she call you what name do you go by listen for your name as she calls you Joseph Joseph mm-hmm so tell me what happens. She's telling me to get out. But I feel like I can get this latch open to help the horses. She's screaming at me, I see. My brother. And he's pointing up and I look up and I see the top of the barn start to cave in and it's like on fire but I feel cold what happens next Joseph I think it falls on me So allow yourself to transition out of that small body and tell me what happens after you leave your body. I feel kind of, kind of stuck down there for a little bit, like mm -hmm. in the in the flames, but as I pull up I see my mom and she's very sad. She's crying. And my older brother's trying to come get me. But it's too, it, there's too much fire. How do you feel? I feel cold. Mm -hmm. I feel uh, cold and unsure. Mm hmm. So what happens to you, Joseph? Where do you go? Do 
Do you go anywhere? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just... I can see the scene. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to see time progress. What happens? What happens to that barn? It's a rubble. Mm -hmm. And tell me if you still remain there. Do you remain with your family or mm -hmm. do you go somewhere else? I think maybe I remain for a while. Mm -hmm. What do you do there? See yourself doing what you were doing after you transition. I'm just watching, watching the family. Mm -hmm. My mom is sad. My brother is really sad. Do you do anything to get their attention? I want to hug him. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't know I'm there. How does that make you feel? I'm sad. Mm -hmm. So what happens next, Joseph? I want you to time progress even further and see what happens with your brother and mother and sister. Do you stay with them? Oh, no, that night. Mm-hmm. Where do you go to next? A transition. Mm-hmm. Leave. And where do you go? I'll go to the light. Mm-hmm. So let's go to the light and see who's there to meet you. I see my brother. Mm-hmm. What does he tell you? He's smiling. He says, see, I was here the whole time. Mm-hmm. He never left, did he? And he gives me a big hug. Mm-hmm. What happens next? Who greets you after your brother? There's lots of people. Mm -hmm. Who are these people? It's like a party. Mm. Is it a Joseph welcoming party? <laughs> hmm? Yeah. Mm hmm. Who are they? What do they look like? I see my mom in that lifetime. I see some animals. Mm hmm. Who are these animals? Connect with them. How did you know them? I guess they're with me in all my lives. Mm -hmm. They're like guides. Mm -hmm. Guideposts. They're guideposts? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else do you see? It's bright and I 
I kind of feel like I, I'm still a little mm-hmm. unsure of what's going on. So what do you do next? Ask for my guide. Mm-hmm. So tell me how your guide appears to you. She's a like a little old German woman. Mm-hmm. It's an accent. What's your name? I feel like she's my grandma. Mm-hmm. Is this Frances or Shirley? Mm, Frances. Frances. Mm-hmm. What name does she go by as a guide? Dorothy. Dorothy. Mm-hmm. So let's find out from Dorothy what the purpose of that life was. Why did you live that life as this little boy, as Joseph? Mm. It wasn't meant to be a long life. Mm -hmm. Why is that? It's to teach me something. Let's find out what it was. Let's find out the lesson in that life. I think I was supposed to teach my family how quick life can be. Mm -hmm. And to appreciate the moments. that we have when we're together. Do you feel that you learned that lesson? Yes. Do you feel that your parents and your brother learned that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that why you're having the welcoming party? Yes. Very good. So let's find out what happens after you meet with your guides. And let's go to this place that you've seen before. In between lives. Where you're with your counsel. Discussing about your life. Describe to me this place. It's in like a, a white room and there's kind of like chairs and I'm sitting across from them. Mm -hmm. How many are there? There's six. Mm -hmm. They're all wearing medallions. They're wearing medallions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do the medallions have on them? One has like a leaf. Mm -hmm. That's the one that's sticking out. One has like a spiral. What else? It seems that they're mostly, they're half and half, half male, half female energy. Mm-hmm. What do they look like? Just like white light. Mm-hmm. How do you feel sitting across from them? I kind of feel puny. Mm-hmm. Why is that? I think because I just left as this little boy. Mm -hmm. But as I 
sit there longer, I converse with them about why why we keep doing this what do they tell you say it's it's part of the learning so what we're supposed to be what we're doing here so whole thing is about learning and these are the tasks that I hadn't yet completed. Mm -hmm. So what's next on your list of tasks? What are you discussing? Love. Mm -hmm. What do they tell you about love? They said I need to work on my heart. Mm -hmm. What's going on with your heart? My heart is closed. Mm -hmm. What what made that heart close? This thing, there are so many incarnations, so dense. Was there one incarnation that totally closed that heart? I don't know, I just feel it pulsing. Mm-hmm. The heart is pulsing. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Let's go back to that lifetime. I want you to see the picture of it. What caused that heart to close? Look around you and see where you are. I think I'm... I think I'm in a concentration camp. Mm -hmm. Skinny. Mm -hmm. We're all real skinny. You feel skinny? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you male or female? I'm female. Mm -hmm. So tell me what's happening there. Just wasting away. Wasting away? Mm -hmm. How old are you? I'm maybe 17. 17. What is your name? Irene. Irene. Irene, how long have you been there? Six years. Six years? Feels like I don't know. Mm -hmm. Feels like a long time mm -hmm. to you. Yeah. So tell me how you got there, Irene. Let's go back in time. Close that scene and let's find out where you were before you got there. Where are you? I think I was in France. Mm hmm. Tell me more. Mm, I started bombing. They started bombing? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And we were traveling out. Who are you with? My grandfather. Mm hmm. My. Younger brother. That's it. How were you traveling? First by foot. Mm-hmm. And we just had our stuff with us. Kind of whatever we could carry. Mm-hmm. At some point we were picked up by a convoy of Like military people. Mm -hmm. Eventually, they put us on a train. And we had 
ended up here. Tell me more. We're all separated at the very beginning. I haven't seen my brother or my grandfather since. Just it's dark and it's cold. Mm -hmm. What do you look like physically? Very skinny. Mm -hmm. Very cold. What does your hair look like? There's not much of it. Mm -hmm. What happened to your hair? It's just fallen out. Mm -hmm. uh, malnutrition. Stress. Who do you live with? I think there's a bunch of us. There's a bunch of like maybe like six or seven of us in the same living area mm -hmm. just really feels just like a pen mm -hmm. we get a little bit of bread so Irene let's close that scene and let's now move to a significant event in that same lifetime Where are you? I think they're taking us to the chamber. Mm -hmm. and say it's going to be like a bath, but we know. How many are you? There's a bunch of us. 30 or 40. Mm -hmm. I just feel like I, I know I have power, but I, I'm they can't hold it in this place. Mm -hmm. It's thick and dense. Mm -hmm. What do you do energetically to protect yourself? Just try to breathe. Mm -hmm. Focus on my breath. What happens next? Just now. It's like a spray when people are crying. Much of us are silent. We just know and just accept it. Mm -hmm. So you can observe as you transition out of that body as an observer and tell me what happens. What happens to your soul as you leave that body? I feel like we exit in a group. Mm -hmm. We go up as a group. Mm -hmm. Do you recognize this group of souls that have yeah. exited? It feels familiar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as you transition as a group, tell me what happens to all of you. I feel like we fly fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. It's getting brighter and brighter and... starting to kind of shake that off. Mm -hmm. Very thick. Mm -hmm. But it, it's like we're together. Who are these that are with you? It's, it's like a group of six. Mm -hmm. Six of us to <sighs> Does 
someone greet you? Let's see Jesus. Mm -hmm. What does Jesus say when he sees you? He smiles. Mm -hmm. And he hugs us. And then what? He says we did a good job. Mm -hmm. He says we did a good job and that um, we knew that that was going to be tough. It was important for all of us to exit together. Why? Mm. It's like we're all pieces of each other. Mm -hmm. Did you leave any behind? Possibly. Mm -hmm. Two. Two of them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What happened to those? I think they're coming later. Okay. So tell me what happens after you meet with Jesus. Where do you go to next? It's like, um, hmm. <laughs> it's like a chamber. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does this chamber look like? Mm. It's like, a, it's like gold. Mm. A gold chamber? Mm, it's kind of like glowing gold. Mm -hmm. and it feels warm. What's in this chamber? It's like a chair. And I can just sit in it. Mm -hmm. And then I get like a shower of... It cleanses me. What color is this that cleanses you? It's like gold. Mm-hmm. What does that do to your soul? Mm. It washes away all the negativity, mm -hmm. the lower vibrations. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to focus that golden light onto your heart. Tell me what your heart looks like. It's almost like it's skinny. Mm -hmm. So let's use that golden light to begin opening Opening that heart and making it bigger and bigger. As you direct that golden light, seeing it getting plumper. See it moving that energy around as it begins to pump its life force. Using that golden light to make it healthier and healthier. You can make that heart as big as you want. Tell me what happens. It feels better. Mm -hmm. 
So now you can fill that heart with other colors. Each color representing something else. What would you like to fill it with next? Love. Mm -hmm. So see that heart being filled with love. Expanding. Because the more love you put in, the more love you can give. The heart is something that pumps blood in and plumps it out. As it brings it in, it takes out all of those, all of that negativity. And as it pulls it out, it brings out new energy into the rest of your soul. Clean energy. Clearing up the negative as it returns to the heart and pumping out more positive. So see that beautiful light as it goes through your soul's body. Clearing out all of that negativity. Sending it back out in love. And tell me how your heart feels now. That's Wonderful. Very good. So let's now look for your guide. Let's look for Dorothy. And see what Dorothy has to say to you about mm -hmm. this life. She gives me a big hug. Mm -hmm. She says that. What did she tell you? She says, she talks about the importance of going together. Mm hmm. It's a group that creates a bigger force. What was the purpose of that coming together for that period of time? Why did this soul choose to go at that time? Because we'd all Be able to leave more of a vibration mm -hmm. what kind of vibration so it's a collective mm -hmm. a collective vibration of trust mm -hmm. knowing. It was a, a, a dense circumstance, mm -hmm. and that's what we needed to um, have instilled to remember that we're bigger than that. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, Dorothy, how do you see the soul progression now? Mm. She's preparing. Mm -hmm. What is she preparing for? Preparing for the changes in the earth. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about these changes? Mm -hmm. It has to do with the sun. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. The sun will erupt. Mm -hmm. And cause changes. Mm -hmm. Are these vibrational changes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how will the vibrational changes affect life on our planet? 
It's just shifting, massive shifting. Mm-hmm. Is this a good shifting? Or a Mm-hmm. 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 The earth needs it to happen mm-hmm. this time. At this time, mm-hmm. very good. So, did Heather choose to come to this life for this purpose? Mm-hmm. Okay, very good. Do you have anything else to tell Heather today? She's doing a good job. Very good. Thank you, Dorothy, for that information you've given her today. Now let's take a deep breath in and let me speak with your higher self. Good morning. Hello. Heather came here today with some expectations, I'm sure. Why did you bring her here? She has a lot of fear. A lot of fear. Okay, tell her about that. She knows it's supposed to be an illusion, mm-hmm. but the human experience is just that, mm-hmm. a human experience. Mm-hmm. Encompasses all of it, all of the positive and the negative. Mm-hmm. They're just kind of stuck. Mm-hmm. So is she feeling in a stuck position right now? There's fear making her... Mm. Right now, at this particular moment, yes. Mm -hmm. But in her general life, she's soaring. Mm. Wonderful, wonderful. Could you help me figure out why you showed her the lives that you did? The one of the little boy. What was that all about? Mm. It's a past life. She remembers that. Mm Mm-hmm. She remembers the family and all being mm-hmm. together and warm and um, was a short life but good. And there was a lot of love. Mm-hmm. And she she tried to share that as best she could in the short amount of time that she had. Mm-hmm. Are anybody, anybody that she knows now in that lifetime? No. No. Very good. Is that lifetime affecting her in any way? No. Very good. Thank you. So then after that, you showed her the one of Irene in a concentration camp. Why did you show her that one? It's still affecting her. Mm-hmm. In what way is that affecting her? A lot of times with food. Mm-hmm. What's she doing with food? She goes back and forth. Mm-hmm. She wants to fast, and then she wants to eat, and then she wants to not eat, and then... Um, So there's a relationship there. A relationship with food. Mm -hmm. Does she feel she's not going to have enough food? I don't think it's that she feels like she's not going to have enough. It's that she feels... Just that... Almost like, it just is what it is, whatever anymore. Okay. So is this the type of attitude that she should have about food? No. Tell her how she should be thinking about food. Food is to be enjoyed, Mm -hmm. shared, it's gifts, to be celebrated. She already knows what to eat and what not to eat. Mm-hmm. She doesn't eat meat. She doesn't eat fish, mm-hmm. which is fine. Happy food. She mm-hmm. knows what happy food is. Mm-hmm. 
but she should enjoy the food. Enjoy it. Okay, mm -hmm. good, good. So can we disconnect that life of Irene from her? We don't need to carry that anymore? Yes. All right, so let's disconnect that so that she is no longer feeling this, this uh, unhealthy relationship with food. Very good. And we also touched upon her heart. And we did a little exercise in that chamber to fill her heart. Can you tell me how her heart is looking now? It's looking better. Mm -hmm. What had happened to her heart? Had she, what had she done? She isolated. Mm -hmm. um, extreme isolation. To... She felt like it was to further prevent more damage, but that in itself caused her to close it. Mm -hmm. Now, is that closing of her heart affecting her relationship now? Yes. She tells me she feels confined. What mm -hmm. is that confinement? connected to she's a very free spirit mm -hmm. she wants to fly mm -hmm. she doesn't want anything weighing her holding her mm -hmm. with restrictions did the life of Irene have anything to do with that yes mm -hmm. Or she was confined mm -hmm. and wasn't allowed to use her heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So can we disconnect that part of her that associates love with confinement? Where she wasn't able to share her love. Yes. Very good. Thank you. What's her purpose in life? She's, um, she's here to find light in the darkness, mm -hmm. change darkness into light. Is that what she does in her lifetimes? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. So was she doing that in the concentration camp? That one was dense. Mm -hmm. That's why there needed to be a collective group. Right. And together they emitted a vibration of trust mm -hmm. in the bigger picture, the bigger mm -hmm. idea of evolution. So it seems to me that she's even doing that in her career, finding the light in the darkness, isn't she? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that why she chose to be where she is? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that kind of answers that question, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's an observer. She's an observer. Mm -hmm. And um, why was she attracted to the work that she's doing now? Is this part of her purpose? Mm -hmm. It's the frequencies. It's the frequencies. So what is she doing with those frequencies? She's... She's manipulating them. Mm -hmm. She's a, like a... Guardian. She's a guardian? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when she is doing what she does, what does she do with the frequencies without her knowing? How does she guard them? She does work in her dream state. What does she do there? She cleanses the frequencies. Mm -hmm. She... rinses them. Mm -hmm. So when they go out, they're, they're pure? 
Yes. Okay, good. Is that affecting people when they watch what goes out with these frequencies? Mm. It's changed so much. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Mm. It's observations, collective observations make it look like a shit show and what does it make it look like? <laughs> a shit show oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and part of that comes from what people observed prior to what they're seeing in the political climate mm -hmm. and so Ultimately, it's like the shadow mm -hmm. has come forward mm -hmm. to be observed. So that way people can choose. Mm -hmm. Can either be positive and find what makes you feel good inside mm -hmm. or continue to focus on what's negative and doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. So what is what is she doing? Is she focusing on the positive or negative? Mm -hmm. She um, she sees it from a bigger perspective. It's mm -hmm. more of a it's just a thread in the matrix. Okay, good, good. What is she doing in her dream time? Because she met Dorothy there. Mm -hmm. She. She, we don't show her much. Mm -hmm. Why is that? It's like she has work to do. Mm -hmm. Where does she go when she dreams? Mm -hmm. When she sleeps? She, she takes, she can take the frequencies to this cleansing pool. It's like a pool of water. She's sitting in the pool, mm -hmm. and she she cleanses them there. Hmm. So even when she goes home from work, she's still working mm -hmm. <laughs> with these same frequencies. Mm -hmm. Okay. So during the the day, she's busy doing one thing, and at night, she's the cleaning crew. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did she meet Dorothy there? In her dream state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, what else is she supposed to know and remember from that dream state? Because Dorothy told her something. Something about unity. Mm -hmm. Does Dorothy want to come forth and remind her? Sure. Okay, so let me ask for Dorothy to step forward. And Dorothy, you had a conversation with Heather during her dream about unity. Would you tell her what that was about? about going together mm -hmm. she needs to make sure that if they go they go together they all go together mm -hmm. like she did before mm -hmm. okay is she doing the, the, the loner thing right now is she trying to do it all by herself mm. she's connected okay She's connected with more of her group than she currently realizes. Okay. Does she need to do a more conscious effort to connect? Or do the souls just know? I know. Okay. Good. Thank you very much, Dorothy. Now, Heather says that in this year, 
earlier this year when visiting her parents, she heard a noise that woke her up, and it was extremely fearful, like terror. It brought back memories of her youth there, where she was terrified to sleep, extremely afraid of the dark. What was that all about, and why so much fear? There are negative energies in that house. Ah. I'm very drawn to her. She's mm. in a heightened state of awareness. Mm hmm So, is there anything that we could do today to assist those energies to go home? Yes. Okay. So, would you allow me to call in my archangels? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'd like to call in my team, and I'd like for them to also ask the warrior angels who are there to help, the angels of the blue flame and the angels of the white light, and let's surround that place, that entire home and its all of its land. And let's find out what's there that's causing all of this terror. Mm. It seems like that particular place there was some dark workings. Mm hmm. I'm seeing underground cellar. Mm hmm. It's very cold. What happens in that underground cellar? It's like people are held. Mm hmm. Let's see what kind of people were held there. I see a woman. Mm hmm. Several women. Mm hmm. What did these women look like? What were they wearing? Mm -hmm. Maybe something from like the sixties. Mm hmm. What was happening there? Mm -hmm. They were supposed to be passing through. Mm -hmm. mm, they're hitchhiking. Mm -hmm. These are young women? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What happened to them? Mm. This guy would take them to the cellar. It's almost like satanic. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what remains in that cellar. Mm -hmm. What energies are still there from those practices? I'd like the archangels to throw a big metal net around these energies that were being used. And tell me what's there. I see a Ouija board. Mm -hmm. Flames. Mm-hmm. Mm. Some type of drink. Mm-hmm. Bones. Mm-hmm. Chains. Mm-hmm. Mm. So let's see what energies are there. How many do you see? Seven. They're like feasting on them. Mm-hmm. So I'd like for the archangels to surround these beings and begin sending that white light 
I'm going to call on the Christ light to beam down among the center of all of these and let's spread that light as high a voltage as possible as bright as it can be filling the souls of these dark ones with that beautiful light allowing them to feast in this love And while these dark ones feast in it, I'd like for that light now to be sent to these women so that we can now heal that trauma in them. So that that trauma is no longer needed in this light, in this house. Let's fully mm. connect them with the light so that they can very easily be lit up but like Archangel Michael to lead the souls of these three, these wonderful women directly to light. And tell me what's happening with those that were affecting and feeding off of them? Mm, say so like a, a, a tornado, like tunnel, like mm -hmm. they're being swished around. Very good. So this vortex of light Let's see what happens to them as they are filled with this white light. Mm. They're kind of pissed off. Mm, of course they are. Let's keep putting more and more light into them. Mm. I wanted to bring that light up as far as we can, making it brighter and brighter. Let's remind them of who they are, who they really are. Mm -hmm. And tell me what happens. And they're like plump, mm -hmm. plump light. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of realizing they've been deceived. Mm -hmm. So let's keep pumping more light into them. I'd like the, all those angels to surround them and begin talking to them as to where they need to go now. Mm. To the light. Mm -hmm. Very good. So tell me what happens. They're like in the funnel up there with Michael. Mm -hmm. Michael has them. Mm -hmm. They're poking their heads up in awe. Mm -hmm. Surprise. Mm -hmm. They're happy. Very good. They're, they're, they're heavy though. Mm -hmm. They're understanding what they did. Mm -hmm. What's wrong? So as there's Michael takes them up, I'd like for the other angels to continue working their light into the rest of that home and the rest of that land so that we can gather all of those that were influenced by this darkness and let's clean up that entire area of any shadows of any darkness. Keep spreading that light now and gathering any others that could have been there to take their their place. Tell me what's happening. They're being sucked up. Mm -hmm. See them coming from the farmhouses and the houses. Mm -hmm. Keep extending it mm -hmm. out into and the why they stuck to the houses, I don't know, but mm -hmm. They're just... Mm. Will you see any hesitation? Direct that white light to get even brighter and spread out even further. Make that funnel even larger. 
We can spread it out into the entire town, entire state. Keep bringing that light brighter and brighter. It feels better. Very it feels good. warm. Very good. Thank you so much. Let me speak with your higher self. So now that we've cleaned up that home, mm -hmm. how will that affect her and her family in that house? Mm. It feels better. This energy is affecting her from her childhood. Mm-hmm. So let's clean that up as they go back in time. Clear up all of that childhood terror that she had. I'd like for you to see yourself going back in time very quickly, very quickly. And as you go back in time and see yourself terrorized in that home, rewind it and rewind it and you could perhaps put some circus music in there as you rewind it making it funnier and funnier seeing yourself going back in time and you can bring yourself through that scene over and over again and keep playing that circus music as you do it and as you look at that terrorizing part now tell me how it feels that's better. Feels That's better. Funny. Very good. Uh huh. It seems just like something out of a cartoon, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Very good. So, does she have any implants? Third eye. The third eye. What's going on with the third eye? unfocused. It's unfocused. Who put that in there? It's from a contract. A contract. Let's find out what that contract is, please. Who does she have a contract with? Mm. other beings. Mm -hmm. Did she make that contract in this life or other lives? Before this life. Before this life. So would you show her when she made that contract and who these beings are? Mm. Tell me what these beings look like. Mm, I think they're tall grays. Tall grays. Mm-hmm. And let's find out what you look like there. I just see light. Light. Okay. So let's find out why the reason is that you have this contract with the tall grays. They want to observe mm -hmm. this lifetime. Okay. And what are they going to be using to observe? my images. Mm -hmm. And what's the purpose of observing? What's your role in this? Bye, Julia. To help the earth. Julia. Mm -hmm. So this contract is something that you came here almost like their scout? They just put the implant there. Ah, I see. And why is it that that implant is obscuring your third eye? Because they want to see too much. Ah, they want to see too much. Okay. Now we know that coming to this planet is a free will planet. Mm -hmm. And my question is, do you continue to want to have this contract with them? No. All right. So I'd like for you to see yourself 
with this contract in your hand and see the tall gray that you made the contract with the contract in his hand or her hand and I want you to discuss your reason with this tall gray why you don't want to have this contract anymore because it's obscuring my vision mm -hmm. and what does he, he or she say? They want to help the earth, mm -hmm. but can't do that without just on their own. Mm -hmm. And so they ask me to participate, but this it's too it's, it's it's changes my perception mm -hmm. and. I need to see clearly. All right. So let's find out from them what we can do to allow them to help the earth, but at the same time giving you the free will to use your third eye. Connect with them and let's negotiate something. I can offer them the observations in my dream state. Mm hmm How do they like that? They're okay with that. All right. So let's begin to tear that contract. I'd like for you to say we tried. We really tried. We tried. We really tried. But it's not working. It's not working. Mm -hmm. You go your way with love. You go your way with love. And I'll go my way. And I'll go my way. We don't need to be together anymore. We don't need to be together anymore. Let's break this contract. So let's see yourself breaking that contract and seeing the tall grays breaking theirs. Mm -hmm. And now that you've broken the contract, you can always shake hands with them, understanding that you can work with them as a team member, but as a team and not as a contract. And tell me how they feel about that. They're okay with that. Very good. Mm -hmm. So now you can uh, tell them to go ahead and remove that implant. And tell me how they're doing it. Mm. It's a screwdriver. Mm -hmm. I almost see teeth. Mm-hmm. Pulling it out. Mm -hmm. Whatever it takes. It's done. Very good. So I'd like to thank the Tall Grays for participating here today and removing that implant and allowing her to continue working with you to help the Earth from her dream stage. And now let me speak with the higher self and ask the higher self now to work with her to start clearing that third eye making it stronger and I'd also like to request at this time Archangel Raphael to step forward and use his beautiful ray of light to begin filling that space and healing her Now, she also had questions about some studies that she was doing. Something that about her dream, um, about her death. She wanted to know, with the recognition of the death experience, if she would be able to retain knowledge or ascend higher if she, something were to happen to her quickly. How does that work? Yes, if you <clears throat> are under the understanding that you're about to transition, mm -hmm. just tell yourself to claim your knowledge. All right. Claim the knowledge. 
So that's if someone knows it. Yes. Mm -hmm. If they don't know they're going to die. Then you can claim that knowledge right as you transition, but accept that it's happened. Okay. You have to accept. Mm -hmm. Now, there are many times when people die suddenly. For example, a motorcycle accident or any other type of quick death. Mm -hmm. And some of these don't even know that they have died yet. Mm -hmm. How would that change the experience? I can leave. I can leave. When it's quick like that, mm -hmm. you have to be advanced enough to know. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like you have to claim that now mm -hmm. before you die to retain that knowledge? Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But as the transition happens, mm -hmm. the quicker you can realize that ascension, mm -hmm. that you're going to ascend and go to the light, claim the knowledge, the energy that was learned, mm -hmm. and then go. Very good. Very good. Would you tell her what her involvement with the dance rave scene was all about? Mm -hmm. It was early dark energies. Early dark energies. Mm -hmm. she, light, light and darkness. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And does but any of that remain with her? She will continue to do that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So when she is in with those energies, does she need to do anything to protect herself mm -hmm. as she dances with these energies? Mm -hmm. it's, it's more like she, she can focus on the light and mm -hmm. it expands. Very good. Very good. What are her superpowers? She is a bit psychic. Mm -hmm. Just strong intuition. Mm -hmm. She works a little bit with the elements and time. What does she do with time? She can manipulate time. She can bend time around? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. So how can she enhance this? I know that we've just cleaned out her third eye and removed her implant. So how can she enhance these abilities now? She's working that way. She's just got to believe. Okay. So faith mm -hmm. is the most important thing. Trust. And trust. Good. What's her role in this new earth? She's doing that. She is already? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, she's asking about um, financial or any type of other vows that she's made. Can you tell her about the vows? The vows mm -hmm. are tools. Mm -hmm. The financial is just a misguided belief system. Okay. Where did that start? Her parents. Mm-hmm. So does she need to have those beliefs anymore? No. All right. Can we cut them away? Mm-hmm. Very good. What would we like to put instead as a belief system? Trust and abundance. All right. So I'd like for... Uh, Heather, to do this exercise with me, please. I'd like for you to see two mirrors in front of you. One mirror has the belief systems that you've been growing up with. This is the belief system of lack, of insecurity as far as finances are concerned. And I'd like for you to see yourself living the way you've been living with that insecurity, and that fear of not having enough, and I'd like for you to age yourself 10 years down, 20, 30, and tell me what you look like and what you have around you in your life as you age with these insecurities about finances. 
Look at the place you live. Mm. Mm. Small and less. Mm -hmm. All right. So now I'd like for you to look in the mirror on the right. And this is the Heather now that has taken her, all of those beliefs and thrown them out and understands her superpowers. She understands that she has these abilities for her intuition to know how to make her life more abundant. She has the use of her third eye to be able to provide her, perhaps with additional income, using that third eye to help others. I'd like for you to see yourself in abundance, in friends, in family, in health, in things that you love to do. Because abundance comes in many different ways. And when you're abundant in one, you're abundant in all. So I'd like for you now to see yourself aging with that abundance. 10 years down the road, 20 years, 30 years. Look at the expression on your face. Look at the way your body feels and looks. And tell me the difference between the mirror on the left and the mirror on the right. Do you see? The mirror on the right, my skin is great, it's glowing, my hair is flowing. Mm-hmm. And see, happy. I see confidence. Mm-hmm. Very good. So mm -hmm. which mirror would you like to keep? Mm, I want the one on the right. All right. So I'd like for you to use a tool of your choice to destroy the mirror on the left. What would you like to use? Use a hammer. All right. So let's go begin pulverizing that mirror so that it does not even reflect mm -hmm. back to you anymore. And I'm going to have one of the angels to go ahead and clean up that mess. As you look at that right side, I'd like for you to begin walking towards that mirror and stepping into it. And as you step in, you can turn around and become that Heather. That Heather full of confidence, of knowing that her intuition guides her to all of this abundance in life, abundance in happiness, in her career, in her life, with her family with the special ones in her life with the animals with her home I'd like for you to feel what that Heather feels like and let's begin life today as that new Heather and how does that feel? Mm, that feels great mm -hmm. so let's use that to fill your entire body with that essence of that new Heather, knowing that this is the new you beginning today. And now I'd like to ask the higher self about her dog, Violet. And I'd like for you to tell me why Violet is afraid of everything. Oops. She didn't, I don't think she expected it to be like this. Mm hmm. This, this incarnation. Mm hmm. What was Violet's expectations compared to reality? Mm -hmm. I think she thought she was going to be able to just run around and be free. Mm hmm. She has to be on a leash. So. Is Violet giving out her vibes of confinement? Violet was feeling, she's feeling fear. Fear, mm-hmm. And where does this fear come from? she has attachments. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what's attached to her. I'd like for you to go ahead and shine a light on Violet 
and let's see what's attached to her. It's a crab. A crab. All right. Let's find out from this crab why it's attached to Violet. Let's address this crab. Why is that crab there? It just saw it too. It was bright. Mm-hmm. And when it passed, it attached. Mm-hmm. So where is this crab attached to Violet? It's on her tail. On her tail. Well, you can imagine having something attached to your tail must be very strange. Mm-hmm. So let's go ahead and shine that white light on this crab. And let's give this crab that light that's needed to transition. And tell me what happened. Mm, it goes to the light. Mm -hmm. So let's connect now with Violet. Let's see what Violet's feeling. She feels better, but there's still more. Mm-hmm. Let's find out what's attached to Violet now. Mm. Some fear. It's mm -hmm. in her chest. All right. What's causing this fear to be in there? Let's find out where this fear began. It began in a previous life. Okay. Let's Let's hop back to that life. Let's have Violet go back there and see what happened to her in that life. She's so beat. She's beaten. Mm -hmm. Where was she beaten? Outside, mm -hmm. on a chain. On a chain. Over and over. Mm -hmm. So do we need to have that fear anymore, that, that memory? All right. So let's disconnect that memory from her. Let's disconnect it, and let's shine some light. Use that light to shine on her, and let's heal her from that pain. I'd like Archangel Raphael to begin healing Violet. And let's ask for the physicians, the veterinarians that deal with animals from the higher realms, to start working on Violet. And tell me where it is that she was holding that fear. In her chest. In her chest. And what does her chest look like now? It's lighter. Mm-hmm. So let's continue working on that. I'd like to, the non-physical veterinarians to continue working on her so that she feels complete relief now that we've detached that life from her. How does Violet look now? So exciting. Yeah, does Violet have anything to tell Heather today? She loves me. Mm -hmm. She loves Isabel. Very good. And Isabel needs to take her out more. Good, good. Very good. Thank you so much, Violet, for that information. May the light of the universe always accompany you. And now, may I speak with a higher self about her career? Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Well, you've already told her about the frequencies. Can you tell her why you led her to Dolores Cannon and the practice of QHHT? She was soul searching, mm -hmm. and that was the bullseye. Mm -hmm. So, what now? Mm, so, she's just starting, but mm -hmm. she'll continue. Um, she'll continue to do the sessions. Sessions are getting better and better. Mm -hmm. She's just learning the power of the surrogate. Mm -hmm. And 
There's a lot to learn. Very good. Who's helping her with this? Dolores. Dolores. Very good. Thank you, Dolores. Does Dolores have any message for Heather today? I need to work on my voice. <laughs> I need to memorize the script. Mm -hmm. Anything that that Heather can use from this session, Dolores? So I like the intro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She got deep quick. Mm -hmm. So any suggestions on how she can even improve even better with her clients? She needs to start at, with the role of mm -hmm. the beginning mm -hmm. as the hypnotist. Mm -hmm. She is attracting many of her friends and mm -hmm. co-workers, mm -hmm. which they're going to have a different experience than people she doesn't know. Right. So I could talk to her a little bit about that later. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Dolores? Any other message for anybody else? She's um, proud of you, Alba. She knows that you're teaching through your work. Mm -hmm. And that's helping many It's a, a road that she paved. Mm -hmm. She sure did. She's grateful. Thank you. I'm very grateful also. Anything else? That's it. Thank you very much, Dolores. May the light of the universe always accompany you. And now I'd like to ask the higher self to do a body scan. Tell me what we find. The left hip. Mm -hmm. What's going on there? Mm. I think it's a past life. Mm -hmm. Can you show her a picture of that past life, please? What's the origin of that? I just see it separated from the body. Okay, very good. What happened? in that past life. I think it was torn off by a tiger. Torn off by a tiger. Very good. You a boy or a girl or a man, man or a man. woman? Man. Mm -hmm. So let's see what happens there. What's the what was the reason why you were there? I'm a gladiator. Gladiator. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's that's how my life ended. Mm -hmm. And that's what your job was, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So now that your your hip has been torn off, I'd like for you co to connect with that with that tiger. Mm -hmm. And let's find out what agreement you had with that tiger. Agreed that it would take my life. Mm -hmm. um, took the whole leg, which is fine, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I um, I would stick around, and as others fought, mm -hmm. help them transition. Wonderful. So you did a wonderful job in that life, didn't you? Mm -hmm. You gave up your body in order for others to be helped mm -hmm. transition. Yes. So now I'd like for you to go back to that body and I'd like for you to use that light that you have within you to begin healing that body. I want you to see yourself again going back in backwards time as you heal that body using that white light and bringing that leg and that hip back to exactly where it needs to be. 
and tell me when you feel yourself completely healed again from that injury. How does the leg feel now? Mm, better. Better. Because we know that when we transition, we need to transition whole, as a whole body, and that you are missing that part of your body. So now I'd like to ask the higher self to disconnect her from that life. We don't need to have her reminded. We now know that she had a contract with a tiger, and it was... A very good one, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how does her hip look now? Much better. Very good. Mm-hmm. Very good. What else do you see in her body that we need to take care of today? That's it. That's it. All right. So if you can't find anything, I'll give you, I'll ask you about some of the issues she asked about. Can you tell her about her eyes? She wants to be able to see again. Mm-hmm. Why is she not being able to see? She's, that's a, she's learning to re-see. Mm, okay. Is that going to help her? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. So can I ask now to begin the healing yes all right so what would you like to use x-ray goggles very good very good thank you so much she says she has pain in her toes what's causing that part of it was that life okay Mm -hmm. so do we need to have that anymore no. All right. So would you put some light into that also? Mm-hmm. Okay. Good. What's going on with her gallbladder? Mm. It's toxins. Toxins? Where, where are the toxins from? Mm, they're from this life. Mm-hmm. Food. Food. She hasn't been respecting her body? Mm. She's good at respecting her body. She knows, but it's just the food is so... Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So what can we use today to begin healing her liver and gallbladder from all these toxins? It's like an oil. All right. A hot oil. Okay. So what will that hot oil do for her liver and gallbladder? Cleanse. Okay. Very good. Pull out all the impurities. Mm Mm-hmm. Flesh it. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Would you tell her what was the reason that her appendix ruptured? Mm. She was moving too fast. Mm. Was, and she felt fear. Mm-hmm. She felt fear that she knew that others knew. Ah. That she knew stuff. Mm-hmm. What about now? Is she at peace with that? Mm. Yes. Okay. It was, also a, it was also a test, but it was too early. She didn't... She could have healed mm-hmm. from that without the doctors. Okay. But she did not. She didn't know about that then? She knew about it, but it just didn't happen that way. Okay. Is there anything that I could have asked that I didn't that you would like to tell her at this time? No. No, very good. Do you have a final message for her or anybody else? Her path is what she creates. Mm -hmm. She's learning to manifest beauty and love. 
and abundance that will to continue to flourish mm -hmm. from her to others to those that surround her and far very good are we complete now yes thank you so much you all right <laughs> so we're here. we're here so tell everybody how it felt to be hypnotized uh it was wild yeah i definitely felt um um all sorts of emotions yeah. kind of all balled into one yeah. and then like just a vibration yeah but, yeah yeah so mm -hmm. so um this session was something that um was your second was it your second it was sort of my second your second kind of my third i call okay. it my third so what how did it differ from others that you had um, it was it was similar, mm -hmm. but um, I felt like you guided me, mm -hmm. and I went easier. Okay, like I was Good. able to um, just go with what came out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and we went all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> and you noticed that we didn't go in one direction. We went to the higher self, kept going back to another life, kept going back. I mean, we jumped around everywhere. Yeah, so you could see that it, it's not always just going in one direction we can go back and ask okay what was that all about and we did that mm -hmm. we did that mm -hmm. so do you recommend this to other people oh for sure yeah and and even that even better is that tell them what you do um so i i just am a new qhht practitioner or uh -huh. the, the dolores cannon method mm -hmm. um so i've just i've done like my first 18 and i'm just starting the practice so, yes yeah so where are you located? I'm in Seattle. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And we are in Seattle today, well, mm -hmm. close to Seattle. And uh, I do travel all over the place, and this was a great opportunity to meet Heather and, and show her my technique, which is not the QHHT method. Mm -hmm. It was very different than what you were taught, yes. correct? Mm -hmm. Very so, different. So just understand, this was not QHHT. Was not. It didn't start like QHHT, it, it did not end, end like QHHT. <laughs> so there was nothing like QHHT. The only thing that was similar is that we did talk to the higher self and went to past lives. So how did how did it feel differently to you to go into a different type method? I appreciated it. Yeah. Just because I had done the other method twice uh -huh. and to just, um, just to, to see if, you know, oh, am I going to go as fast? Am I going to go to the same place? Am I, you know, how is yeah. it going to feel? Yeah. But yeah, it felt, it, it, I was there. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> <I got it. laughs> so, um, anyway, the, how would, how would people find you if they wanted to find um, you? Um, so I am, if you look at, um, the quantum healing practitioners.com, mm -hmm. um, then, um, you can look at my name Yes, and I'll be there. Heather yeah. Stubbs. Yeah. Heather Stubbs. So, uh, and we'll, we'll have the, the little uh, letters here so you can find her, but, um, we are in Seattle. I do work out of Miami. That is my home, even though. Most of these sessions are not from Miami anymore. I, if you want to find me, you can go to albawyman.com. And uh, the sessions are really far in advance. You're not going to get a session right away because I, I do book very, very far in advance. And if you are not in Miami, you can go to my out-of-town page on my website. Sign up for my newsletter, please. And as soon as I am coming to a city near you, sign up very, very quickly because the slots are very limited and they go very quickly. So I hope you enjoyed this video, this session that we had, it was really great. And uh, I hope to see you sometime soon. Thank you very much. Bye. Give me a hug. Oh, thank you. Alba. You're welcome.